Hi, and welcome to the first part of a tutorial on C Sharp Generics. This tutorial is also the fifth part of a course on advanced C Sharp topics. This video will serve as a basic introduction to generics in C Sharp. We'll first answer the question, what is meant by generics? We'll look at a basic example of implementing generics in C Sharp and the advantages associated with the use of generics in C Sharp. So let's start with the question, what is meant by generics in relation to the C-Sharp programming language? Generics was introduced in C-Sharp version 2 and enables developers to use type parameters in code. This makes it possible to design classes and methods that defer the specification of one or more types until the class or method is declared and instantiated by client code. For example, by using a generic type parameter T, you can write a single class that other client code can use without incurring the cost or risk of runtime costs or boxing operations. We'll discuss what is meant by boxing operations and runtime costing a bit later in this video. Generic classes and methods combine reusability, type safety and efficiency in a way that their non-generic counterparts cannot. Generics are most frequently used with collections and the methods that operate on them. For more content like this on advanced C-Sharp concepts and much more, please consider subscribing and please ring the bell so that you'll be notified of future content released from this channel. Let's look at a simplistic example to help us understand generics in C-Sharp. To help us understand generics as a whole, we are going to look at a C-Sharp collection type, the ArrayList, versus a C-Sharp generic collection type, a generic list. An ArrayList provides the advantage of encapsulating the functionality of dynamically increasing the size of the list as more items are added to the ArrayList. In other words, unlike with an Array, we do not have to define an ArrayList with a size. It will dynamically handle its size as items are added to the ArrayList. The ArrayList stores values as objects. This involves implicitly boxing value type items when they are added to the ArrayList. Unboxing these items is required when these items are retrieved from the ArrayList. We'll discuss boxing and unboxing in a bit. So we are only using an ArrayList in this example to highlight the benefits that replacing an ArrayList with a generic list provides. In doing so, we can understand the overall benefits provided through the use of generics. Note that Microsoft has stated that Microsoft does not recommend using the ArrayList for future development. So we'll first use the ArrayList collection in our example and later replace the ArrayList collection with a generic list to highlight the benefits of generics. Let's create a console app.NET Core project. I'm going to name my project Generics Basics. Let's create a class named Salaries. Let's define a member variable as an ArrayList. The ArrayList type is a member of the system.collections namespace so let's ensure that we include a directive to the system.collections namespace at the top of our code. And let's create a constructor. Within the constructor, let's populate our array list with data that denotes salaries. Let's create a public method named getSalaries that simply returns the array list that has been populated with the salary data. So this method returns an object of the array list type to the client code. So the code within our main method is our calling client code. The code here will create an instance of the salaries class and then call the getSalaries method and assign the returned collection from the getSalaries method to a local array list variable. So let's write the code in the main method to do this.
Let's say there is a requirement to add a bonus of 2% to the second item within the collection. So let's write code to achieve this. We know that the salaries collection contains floating point numbers. So let's assume that we can assign a member of the collection to a local variable defined as float. So let's write the code for this. Okay, great, so this is good. We have a red squiggly line under the code where we are assigning the second item of the relevant array list to a variable we have defined as float. So a type incompatibility has been flagged by the C-sharp compiler. If we hover our mouse pointers over the red squiggly line, we can see a message from the C-sharp compiler which is telling us that we cannot implicitly cast an object to a float, but that an explicit conversion exists. So let's write code to explicitly convert the relevant object value stored in the relevant array list to the float data type like this. Great, and the red squiggly line goes away and all seems well. Then we can finish off the code by writing code to write the salary, which now includes a bonus of 2% to the console screen. Let's run the code. Oh, what is happening here? We have received a runtime error, specifically an invalid cast exception. The exception message states, unable to cast object of type system.double to system.single. Remember, float is an alias for system.single. So note that when we added the salaries to the array list within the constructor of the salaries class, we simply added literal values that are floating point values. We did not explicitly express the type of the relevant literal values. The type of floating point literals are by default interpreted as the double data type. We could have expressed the types for these literal values as float data types by adding an F after the relevant literal value like this, but we did not do this. So in the main method or in our client code, we assumed that a value within the array list was of the float data type. And this assumption resulted in a runtime error occurring. In a bit, we'll talk about how generics preemptively prevents such erroneous assumptions from causing runtime errors. Let's first discuss boxing and unboxing. Okay, so an array list stores values that are automatically typed as the root C-sharp data type, which is the system.object data type. Note that all .NET data types ultimately inherit from the system.object data type. When a value type, in our case a numeric floating point value type, is stored within an array list, the value type is wrapped within an object type and stored in memory on the heap. This process is known as boxing. What does boxing mean? Boxing is the process of converting a value type to the type object or to any interface type implemented by this value type. So when the common language runtime boxes the value type, it wraps the value inside a system.object instance and stores it on the managed heap. For more information on data types in C-sharp, please access a video created by this channel by clicking on a card made available in the top right-hand corner of your screen. A link to this video has also been included below in the description. So, when a value is retrieved from the array list, as we are doing in the main method, the value must first be unboxed. Unboxing extracts the value type from the object. Boxing is implicit. Unboxing is explicit. The concept of boxing and unboxing underlies the C-sharp unified view of the type system in which a value of any type can be treated as an object. So this highlights two disadvantages of using an array list where a generic list can be used instead and can be implemented whereby the values contained within the generic list can be strongly typed through generics at compile time. Firstly, as we have proven, writing code in this way can result in runtime errors because the values in an array list are not strongly typed at compile time. Secondly, 
When a value type is stored within an array list, the value type is automatically boxed. And when a value type is retrieved from the array list, the value must be explicitly unboxed. This is done through explicit type casting. This boxing and unboxing functionality carries with it a performance overhead. Boxing and unboxing can affect the performance of our applications. Using a generic list to strongly type the values stored within the relevant generic list has two distinct advantages. One, type safety. The code is type checked at compile time, which preempts runtime errors. This makes typecasting at runtime not necessary, which eliminates the potential for type related runtime errors occurring. Number two, enhanced performance. Unlike with an array list, the overhead of boxing is not necessary when adding a value to a strongly typed generic list, and the overhead of unboxing is not necessary when retrieving a value from the strongly typed generic list. Like an array list, a generic list carries the advantage of being able to grow dynamically, i.e. it is not necessary to define the size of the collection when it is declared. So with all that said, let's implement generics in our code. To implement generics, let's replace the array list within our salaries class with a strongly typed generic list. The generic list is part of the system.collections.generic namespace, so let's ensure that we have a directive to this namespace at the top of our code. Let's hover our mouse pointers over the list type in our code. So notice the T within angle brackets. This T serves as a placeholder for a data type. The developer is able to pass a data type as an argument to the generic list in order to declare that only the type passed into the T parameter must be stored within the relevant generic list. So we have passed in the float data type to our generic list. Notice how there is a red squiggly line under each of the floating point values we are attempting to add to our strongly typed generic list. The c -sharp compiler is insisting that we express these floating point values as the float data type. And we know we can do this by adding an F to the end of each of these values like this. Through the use of generics, the c -sharp compiler checks our code at compile time which prevents the possibility of type-related runtime errors. So we are simply commenting out the code where we previously used the array list and in its place, applying the relevant generic list code. Our list is now strongly typed with the float data type, which means that our list can only store value types that are of the float data type. This is the basics of generics. Let's run the code. Great! I hope you have enjoyed this video which serves as an introduction to generics in C-sharp. In the second video, we'll go further into generics and introduce associated concepts like, for example, constraints. For more videos on advanced C-sharp concepts and much more, please consider subscribing and please ring the bell so that you'll be notified of future content released from this channel. If you feel you've gained value from viewing this video, please hit the like button, it'll be greatly appreciated. Please feel free to share any of the videos released from this channel with anyone you feel may benefit from their content. Your comments are of course welcome. The code created in this tutorial can be downloaded from GitHub. Please see a link to the relevant repository below in the description. Thank you and take care.